In the previous video, we uh, showed the form of the Tsai Wu failure criterion, which involved um, some strength parameters that we're going to define in this video. So we um, narrowed the uh, Tsai Wu criterion down when it's in plain stress, condition of plain stress, to be as shown here. So um, again, if you can expand this to three dimensions, you have a lot more terms, but uh, these are the ones for plain stress only. So we have sigma 1, sigma 2, and tau 1, 2 are the only components of stress. And this second order polynomial then is uh, will predict failure when the um, sum of all these terms is equal to 1. Now to figure out what those terms are, let's consider if we did a tensile test with all the fibers in the uh, axial direction and also do a compression test with those fibers in the axial direction. Well, in the case of the tensile test, at failure, sigma 1 is going to equal to the tensile strength, which we defined as x sub t. When we do the compression test, sigma 1 will equal to x of c, which, as we said earlier, we're going to always use a negative value for the compression strength. The other stresses will be equal to 0. So when we plug those values into the Tsai Wu criterion, the only non-zero terms are the ones that are shown here. Now we can solve those simultaneously. So we'll take the first equation and we'll multiply, th multiply uh, both sides by x of c. Take the second equation, multiply through by x of t, and if we subtract the second from the first, that'll eliminate the f1 terms, and we'll be able to solve for the f11 term here. Do a little bit of rearranging, and f11 comes out to be 1 over xt xc. Now remember, we do put the compression strength in as a negative number, so this will be a positive value, F11. Now we can take that value and plug into one of the equations and solve for F1. And so F1 comes out to be 1 over xt plus 1 over xc. Now we can make si similar arguments for uh, tests in the transverse direction where we just put a sigma 2 tensile and compression and the results will be that uh, similar forms to F11 and F1. F22 be 1 over minus, excuse me, minus 1 over yt yc and F2 is equal to 1 over yt plus 1 over yc. So the transverse tensile and, and uh, compression strengths there. Okay, that takes care of a few of the terms. Now let's consider shear. On the left side, we've shown what we would call a positive uh, shear stress, and on the right side will be a negative shear stress. And so at failure, on the uh, left side, tau 1, 2 will be the shear strength S, and on the right side, the tensile strength at failure will be minus capital S. Put those into the Psi Wu. Again, the only terms that we're going to have are the ones involving F6 and F66, and once again, we'll solve those simultaneously. So simply um, add the two together which gets rid of F6 and we solve for F66 as just being 1 over the shear strength squared. And <coughs> if we plug that into either one of the original equations we found out that the linear term F6 is equal to 0. Okay. Now there's a couple of uh, coupling terms here and um, let's take a look at if we consider that whatever loading we have here, whatever combination of stress sigma 1 and shear stress tau, that if that loading causes failure, because of symmetry, if we change the direction of the shear stress, those same values will also cause failure. <coughs> and so at failure, on the left-hand side, again, Sigma, uh, sigma star and tau star are going to be the uh, stresses at failure. And on the right side, sigma star and minus tau star will be the uh, stresses that cause failure. So in the first case, we plug that into the Tsai Wu criterion. And for the second case, we do the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me, and now we'll subtract the second equation from the first. Now what we come up with is, is shown here, and as we can see, uh, certainly there is a non-zero combination of sigma and tau that will cause failure. So the only way this is be true is if F16 is equal to zero. And we can make a similar argument for F26. 
So at this point we've defined all of the terms except for one, and that one is the F12 term. And it's really difficult to, uh, to find this experimentally. There have been some attempts to do that. But it's also been shown that if you uh, look at the extreme values of what this can be with its physical limits, that it doesn't really have much effect on the final result. So a lot of times you'll see uh, uh, text to say, well, just set it equal to zero. One other thing we can do is like um, compare this to the von Mises criterion. So what we're going to say is that uh, since the von Mises predicts uh, yield, and since uh, productile materials, the tensile and um, compressive strengths are going to be the same, and the uh, strengths in both directions are going to be the same, we'll define xt and yt is equal to the yield strength, xc and yc equal to minus the yield strength. And if you remember from mechanics of materials, the von Mises criterion predicts that the shear strength will be 1 over the square root of 3 times the yield strength in tension, or compression in that matter. So you can plug those, well, first of all, those will give you these values for F11, F22, and F66. And because of the fact we have equal strengths in tension and compression uh, for ductile material, then the, the um, linear terms F1 and F2 both go to zero. So plugging those into the Saiwu criterion and rearranging that a little bit um, by multiplying through by the yield strength. Um, Here's what we end up with. Now, if you compare that to the von Mises criterion, you'll see it looks pretty similar. Sigma 1 and sigma x, sigma 2 and sigma y, and um, the shear strength uh, shown here. And um, again, the yield strength will be over here on the right. So everything kind of lines up. And so if we can make this term equal to this one, then um, the Psi Wu will reduce to the von Mises criterion. So again, if F, 2 times F12 times the yield strength squared is equal to minus 1, then those criteria are the same. So F12, uh, in this way of looking at it, would be 1, o, one half, oh, what, excuse me, 1 over 2 times the yield strength squared. Now remember though, for the ductile material, we said that the yield strength could be the tensile strength, in the x direction, the tensile strength in the y, or negative values x of c and y of c. So a lot of interpretations that can uh, make that f2 value be the same as the um, uh, so that the Psi Wu and von Mises match each other. One of them, you can use all four of the strengths as shown here. Um, what the Hoffman criteria does is to use only the tensile values. So in that case, uh, f12 is as shown here. And so 2F12, which goes into the equation, would be minus F11. And again, if we use that, not only does the Psi Wu criterion give you the same as the Hoffman criterion, but also gives you the same as the von Mises. So we're going to use that value. So to wrap it up, here is our final failure criteria, which again will be either a Psi Wu or the Hoffman, and will reduce to the von Mises. We put in that value for F12, and so there is our failure, uh, failure criterion. Those are the values F1 and F2, F11, and F22, and F66. And again, as we noted earlier, now you can use this equation to predict the yielding and ductile materials as well as failure of composite materials. Okay, now again, what that tells you is if the number is less than 1, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be safe. If it's greater than 1, it's going to be fail. But what we really want to know is uh, what's our factor of safety. So using the Saiwu criterion in the next class, we'll calculate how to find the factor of safety with this criterion.